Hello. In this video, we're going to look at all the text properties that you need to know. Text and font CSS properties, even though there are now about 40 different properties available to us, a lot of them are obscure, rarely needed, not widely supported in the browsers, so what I'm going to cover in this video is pretty much everything you need to know about text and font properties. With one exception, we have covered font family in a previous video, so we're not covering that in this video. What we will cover is these properties, and we are going to apply them to a particular paragraph in the page you see on the left, that paragraph has been given a class of special. So I'll show that to you. So only the one paragraph has that class on it. The other four paragraphs do not. And so we'll apply them one at a time so you can see what they do. So text size, if we want to increase the text size, we can do that with percent. So let's see what 150% looks like. I save and I reload, and there's our special paragraph, the only one affected. So that's 150%, not very surprising, okay? Uh, but what you may not realize is 150% is the same as 1.5 rem. And rems are really preferred nowadays. So I'll reload and you see it's the same. Now, in this case, it would also be the same as 1.5M, reload, same, okay? Um, but I would say that for most cases, most times you're going to make the size of any font for a heading, for paragraphs, for the whole body, uh, larger or smaller, you want to use rims. You definitely never use pixels, PX, in fact, the only things that you can use legitimately in 2018 for text size are percent, %m, and rem. Don't use any other measurements to change the size of a font. So I'm going to change that back to inherit, which is the default, which means no change from anything else and I'm going to reset our page. So I'll do this after each thing. Now, font weight. Uh, the default is normal. So that's what we see here. This is font weight normal. And pretty much the only thing you can really use for font weight is the word bold. And I will show you what that looks like. Um, it's not as dramatic with this font because it's kind of a heavy font. Um, if I take off the Arvo, reload, you'll see a more dramatic difference if we're looking at the font Dito. So back to Arvo. What I also want to show you is that even though it is allowed, it's permitted to put numbers in here. Um, I forget what the lowest one is, but the highest one is a thousand. It's not going to make any difference unless you've loaded different font families and specified them. So putting in a thousand, putting in 800 really makes no change. And when you use the lower numbers, it just isn't bold at all. It goes back to being normal. So pretty much for font weight, you are going to have normal or bold and no other choices. Now the next one, font style, students often get confused between font weight and font style. Weight means it's either heavy or it's not. It's weight, so bold or not. Style is either it's italic or it's not. So normal is not italic, and your only choice here is italic. Um, there actually are, I think, two other choices, but we just never use them. This back to normal, which is the default, right? So you've seen what italic looks like, and any font can be transformed into italic. Some look better in italic than others. Um, back to normal. Okay, 
line height. Now this is something you may have never encountered before if you have not studied design. So line height governs how much vertical space each line of type takes up. And so if I increase this, let's say I make it 150% to use something that's easy for you to understand, right? So you see that the spaces between the lines have increased a lot compared with the other paragraphs. Now, 150 might be too much. Um, it might look better at, say, 120. Maybe that really looks the same. So you don't always need this. And if you thought that, well, these paragraphs, the normal ones, they look fine, I don't need any line space, then don't do this. But sometimes you might actually want to pad it out a little bit because perhaps your font is quite small and if you put a little extra line space in, it becomes easier to read. But be warned, too much line spacing actually makes the paragraph harder to read because the physiology of the human eye means your eye sort of uh, moves around too much and can't follow the line. Line height can also be specified with M or REM or percent. Uh, so I will show you uh, REM. Okay, exactly the same. But one of the things about using M is if you have changed the font size using rem, m or percent. Uh, so let's say we make the font size um, 1.6 rem. And we put the line height back to normal for a moment. Okay, so I've got a bigger font size here. It can be better to use M's for the line height because they will be relative to the font size that you've changed it to. So if I used REM in this case, REM, quite different because now I'm using the root M, which is smaller than this. The root M is one rem, okay? So by putting in 1.5 rem based on the root, I'm actually squishing the lines together because they've become bigger than that. So line height, I would recommend you either use M or percent, which might be easier for you to figure out. And that will be based on what is the line height in this item already. So let's put those back. Okay, so now I will reload the page and we're back to normal, everything is the defaults. Now text align left is the default, so if I remove this line and I save my CSS and I reload, there is no change. So text align left is the default, you never have to specify it. Don't waste a line in your CSS by specifying something you don't need. But I wanted to put it in here so you see that that's the default and so that you see the differences. So text align right, this is almost never advisable. All right, so when you look at this paragraph here, it is considered much harder for the human eye to read this because of the ragged left edge. So a line right is definitely not preferred. Center likewise is never preferred because this ragged left edge makes it harder for the eye to scan back and forth. Centered text is considered a poor design choice. And finally, possibly the worst choice of all for the web is justify. Justify is really terrible on the web because web browsers are unable to adjust the space between words gracefully the way we can with print typesetting. So what you'll see is you'll often see big unsightly gaps 
between words in some of the lines if you choose justify. And those also make it harder for the human eye to like stay on the line and concentrate and actually read um, without a lot of effort. So the best of all is left. That is the normal, that is the default, and I cannot emphasize enough that you should almost never specify text align, just leave it at the default, which is left. Okay, text decoration. We usually see text decoration on links, that is on the pseudo classes, uh, link, hover, focus, etc. So the thing that we often see is underline. And since links are underlined by default, we can use text decoration none to take off that default when it is a link. Um, there are also a couple of other choices that you might use on some special occasion. Overline and line through can be good sometimes if you've done some editing and you wanna show, you wanna preserve that previously incorrect text and show people that you've cut it out and then explain afterward, you know, this is incorrect and here's the correct version. Um, there is also a funky, funny, weird thing that we can do with text decoration. And that is we can specify three values, a little bit like uh, specifying border values. So we can say underline, and then we can say wavy or any of several other possible values for what kind of underline it is. And then the fourth one would be your typical hex code for color. So I'm gonna save and reload, and you can see that that would be a weird kind of thing that you could do. And I'm going to, um, zoom in a little bit so you can just see how that looks, that text underline. Okay, so back to normal. Now, letter spacing is something you're also going to use only on rare occasions, and I'll show you a kind of dramatic version of it with one rem. So that's the width of a capital letter M in our default font. So it's going to be pretty extreme. All right, very extreme. So it means spaces between the letters. Now, if you were going to use it at all, you would probably use 0.1M more likely than 1M. So let's see how that looks. It still doesn't look very good with this particular font family that we've got. And in fact, you would almost never, possibly never, use letter spacing in a paragraph or you know, with a paragraph style text, smaller text. Where you might use letter spacing is in a heading or I'll show you a specific example. Sometimes when you've uppercased text, you want to add a little letter spacing because the all uppercase letters are kind of squashed together and they become more readable if you add just a little tiny bit of letter spacing. But before I show you that, I want to show you how text transform works. So I can make everything in my special paragraph uppercase by using the text transform property. I could also make it all uh, initial caps. The value for that is capitalize. That can be useful in headings. It can make your website more consistent. If you wanted to have headings always have the uh, title case style, you could use text transform capitalize. And the default is none, so we'll go back to that. And let me skip over to my other example to show you how letter spacing and text transform might work together. So here we have a part of what might be a navigation bar at the top of a page. And in fact, it's similar to something you saw in an earlier video if you've been watching all of them. So here they are. Three words, upper and lower case, initial cap, everything else lower case. So this is a case where you might have decided, I really might want those to be all uppercase, 
do I have to open the HTML and change them? And do I have to change them on multiple pages and so forth? Well, no, you don't. You can just go into your CSS. Those three words are governed by the LIs because they are in LI elements. And so the first thing I can do is take the comment characters off of this line and save and reload. And so now we've got uppercase. But you see how uppercase letters are, they make things a bit hard to read and that's partly because they're very close together and it's harder for the eye to sort of pick them out and tell them apart. So if we add a little bit of letter spacing. This is a time when letter spacing might be a really good choice. So I've saved my CSS and I've got a letter spacing of 0.1 M. And I used M's because my font size is already you know, larger. So M's are good in this case. And I reload and they become just a little bit easier to read. Of course, the words become wider because I'm adding a tenth of an M of space between every two letters, right? So that's what just happened. So letter spacing can be really useful uh, in rare cases, but just keep it in the back of your mind that you are able to use this CSS property. So now let's return to our uh, main example. And the last property that we haven't covered is text shadow. And again, this is something you're not going to use often because text shadow looks kind of cheesy in a lot of cases. Um, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I think before we do it, we should increase our font size. Text shadow has four possible values. The first two values govern the width of the shadow to the left of the letter and below the letter. In this case, sometimes pixels may be more suitable than M's or REM's. The third value is the amount of blur on this color that you're going to use as the shadow. So I'm going to use two pixels for that. And I'm going to use a dark gray, not a black, well, a medium gray. And you see what happened, right? Now I'm going to both increase the blur and I'm going to lighten the gray color and reload. Okay, it's still pretty subtle. Increase the number of pixels, starting to look more like a blur. And then I can also try to give it a, a different a color, not a gray, um, but a blue. Very, very subtle. I'm not sure if you can even really see that in the video. Um, let's try something a little more extreme. Okay. You need to understand that you can continue to adjust the color, the offset, both to the right side and to the bottom, the blur, and continue to reload until you get an effect that's what you want. Now, like I said, you typically will not use this. Sometimes we use a text shadow to uh, improve contrast when our text and our background are too close together. Instead of changing the shade of one or the other, we might add a shadow to make the contrast appear to be greater. If I change my text color to a brown, that probably will not stand out very well against my background. But if I give it a darker text shadow, I might be able to make that work. I'm not saying this is ideal, but it's one example of how we might use text shadow. We don't usually go all the way to black, but sometime you might, right? So that is all we have for the text and font properties that are commonly used. That's really all you need to know. And of course, you can look up how to use them when you need them. You don't have to memorize them all.